In this lesson, as promised, it's gonna be a challenge video. In this one, you'll be using what you learned about Socket.io to set up the events necessary for the chat application. Now to get started, what we're gonna do is comment out all of the code for the little count app we built in the last lesson. I'll leave that code around though, so you can use it as a reference for the stuff you'll be creating in this one. So in chat.js on the client, what I'm gonna do is comment out everything except for that very first line. And then over in index.js on the server, what I'm gonna do is comment out my two calls to socket methods inside of the connection callback. Now, the only thing that runs when someone connects is my log method call. Up above, I'm gonna make sure to remove that count variable, which is no longer being used. And right here, this is where I'll paste in the challenge comments for the first of the two challenges you'll be completing. The goal here is to send a welcome message to new users. So you're gonna have the server emit a message event when a new client connects. This is going to send some data back, which will be a string, the message that the client should receive. And in this case, you could just send something like welcome. So that would be similar to down below where we emit count updated and pass in the count. Here, you're emitting message and passing in a string with your welcome message. Now, once the server is correctly emitting that event, you wanna make sure the client has the code set up to actually receive it. So you're gonna have the client listen for the message event, and then you're going to print the message to the console. So when a new message comes in, it should show up down below in the console, similar to how our count was showing up before. Next up, test your work. If you save all of your files and refresh the browser, you should see welcome printing in the console in the Chrome developer tools. So take some time to knock that out using what you learned in the last lesson. When you're done, test your work and then come back and click play. How'd that go? Let's get to it by first emitting the correct event from the server. So right here, when we do get a new connection, we'll use socket.emit to send a message to that particular connection. Right here, the event message followed by the message to send. And in this case, anything would have worked. I'll go ahead and use welcome. Next up, we wanna make sure that the client is actually listening for this event and doing something when it occurs. Let's go ahead and move over to chat.js. In here, we're gonna use socket.on to listen for message and we know we're gonna get access to that message data as the first argument to this function. Now down below, we can go ahead and do something like print it to the terminal right here. I'm just going to dump the message variable. Now I can save chat.js and I can save index.js and we can test our work. So I'm gonna switch over to Chrome. From here, I'll refresh both of my clients and I would expect both of them to get that welcome message and that is exactly what's happening. I have welcome for client one and welcome for client two. Now from here, what we wanna do is provide the user with an interface where they can type in a message, submit that message and have that message sent to the server. The server is then going to relay that message to all connected clients. So I type something over here and click a button and I should see it show up over here as a new message for them to read. Let's go ahead and talk about how we're gonna get that done over inside of index.js. What I'm gonna do is replace the current challenge comments with a new set. Right here, your goal is to allow clients to send messages to one another. So the first step is to create a form with a text input and a button. Now this is similar to what you did with the weather search form previously in the class. So if you forget how to get that done, you can always dig into the code for that project to jog your memory. And you're gonna add that form into index.html. Now, once you have the form in place in chat.js, you wanna add an event listener waiting for that form to be submitted. Once the form is submitted, you're going to emit an event from the client to the server with that data. 
So when someone submits the form, you're going to get the input text value. You're then going to emit send message, and you're going to provide the string message that the user typed as the data. Next up on the server, you're going to listen for send message. So once that event actually occurs, you'll relay that message to all connected clients. And this is very similar to what we did with increment down below. Right here, we relayed the updated count to all connected clients. You'll simply be relaying the provided message. Now there's a lot to do here, so the best way to approach this is to not try to write every single line of code, then save the program and hope it all works. It's best to move one step at a time. Get the form up and running and make sure it renders correctly. Add a form, a submit event handler, then run your project and make sure that triggers. From there, start to emit the events and test each step of the way. There's no need to write all of the code because when it fails, it's going to be really hard to figure out what failed. If you write just the code for step one and it fails, then you know step one failed. So take some time to move through this one. There's quite a bit here. When you're done, test your work. You should see a form for each client in the browser. When you type something in that form and click the button, you should see the message show up in the console for all connected clients. All right, knock that out, test your work, and when you're done, come back and click play. How'd that go? Let's go ahead and kick things off by first creating our form. So like we did with the weather search form earlier in the class, we'll be adding something into our HTML file. Now I didn't tell you to remove the button, but you can indeed remove it. So if you didn't remove it as part of the challenge, just take a moment to remove it right now. Inside of here, we'll be setting up a form exactly like we did with the weather search application. And right here, we're gonna go ahead and provide an input. So I'm going to set up my text input and I'm gonna provide a placeholder like we did before as well. And the placeholder could just be something like message. Perfect. From here, we also wanna set up a button and I will have the button text be something like send, though the exact text you use isn't particularly important. Now, when it comes to setting up the form submit event listener, we could choose to target it by tag, or you could add an ID on right here. Either way would get the job done. I'll go ahead and add an ID on, and I'll call this one something like a message form, perfect. Now with this in place, I can go ahead and refresh the browser to make sure that it's actually showing up correctly. And right here, I'm seeing it, which is a great step in the right direction. With this in place, we've actually finished step number one. Now let's move on to step number two. I wanna make sure that when the form is submitted, we actually do something. So over in chat.js, let's go ahead and kick that off by targeting the form. That is document dot query selector, grabbing it by its ID. And in this case, the ID we just picked is message form. And then we're going to use add event listener. And we're going to listen for that submit event. Now from here, we'll go ahead and set up our function. And if you remember, when we listen for form submissions, we get access to that E event argument. And we want to use E dot prevent default to prevent that default behavior where the browser goes through a full page refresh. This is exactly what we did with the weather web application. Next up, what we want to do is emit an event. So right here, we want to emit send message with the actual text that the user typed in. Now, currently we're not doing any sort of validation. So you could have an empty message that is perfectly fine for now. Let's go ahead and knock this out over inside of our callback function. Right here, let's go ahead and grab the message, storing it in something like a message variable, and I'm going to target that input. So document.querySelector. I'm going to select by tag name, in this case input, and I will use value to grab the value for the input. 
Next up, we're going to use socket.emit to emit the event send message. And we're going to provide the one piece of data I wanted you to provide, which was the message. So I'll go ahead and provide that right here. Now with this in place, the client is actually done. We can save this and the next thing we need to do is make sure that the server is doing something when send message is received. So over in index.js, that means we'll be setting up another call to socket.on right here. And this time on the server, we are listening for send message. We have our callback function that runs when a new message is sent and we get access to that message data right here. So remember the first argument is the name of the event that we're emitting and everything after that is provided to the callback function on the other end. So in this case, we're providing message to the callback function on the server. Now, once again, I could call this variable anything like MSG that would work just as fine, though I will stick with message. Perfect. Now down below, what do we want to do? When I get a new message, I want to send it to every single connected client right here. That is io.emit, emitting the message event and sending the message data. So right here, it's very similar to what we did when someone joins and we send them our welcome message, though in this case, the text for that message comes from another user. Now with this in place, we can make sure to save both the server and the client, and we can go ahead and test our work. So what I'm going to do is move over to the browser, and I'll just give both of my browser tabs a quick refresh. Right here, we have the welcome message for both, which is great. For this first browser tab, what I'm going to do is type from first client. I'll hit enter or click the send button. And what do I see down below? I have that message up showing in real time for both clients. Now, if I type something in for the second client, this is a test and hit enter. We can see that in real time, all clients have access to that data. Now, currently, once again, we're not validating that any message is typed and we're not clearing the input after the message is sent. This is okay. We'll work on focusing on those UI improvements throughout the section. For now, the big picture goal was to make sure that we're able to send messages between the clients connected to our server and we are. Now over inside of Visual Studio Code, we can remove all of the code we had for that count application. I'm going to remove the commented out code in chat.js and save this file. Now it only contains stuff for the chat app. And over in index.js, I'll do the same thing. I'm going to remove the commented out code in our connection callback. And up above, I'm also going to remove the challenge comments right here since they're no longer necessary. That challenge is completed and we've tested our work, making sure it's functioning as expected. Now, before we go, there's one more small tweak I want to make together, and this is not related to socket.io. It's actually related to the input we're creating in index.html. Right here, we're creating an input, and then in chat.js, we are selecting it by its name. Now, if there was another input on the page, that could mess up our code, breaking it. So what we're going to do is make a small change. When we have elements inside of a form, we can set up the name attribute for them. For example, I can provide this with a name, whatever makes sense for what the field is storing. It could be name for a user's name. It could be age or location. In this case, something like message makes a lot of sense. Now we can actually access this forms element by its name from inside of chat.js, making sure that if there was another input on the page, it didn't break our application. So right here, we have name set to message. I'll save the file over here. All we're going to do is change how we get access to the element. In the end, we're still going to pull the value property off of there. What we're going to do is remove everything after the equal sign, and we're going to access E. Now, E has something on it called target. Target represents the target that we're listening for the event on. And in this case, that's our form. So right here, we have access to the form. From there, on our form elements, we have access to an elements property and we can access any of our inputs by their name. So that is E 
dot target to get the form, then dot elements dot followed by message, which is the value we picked. So this is just an alternative way to get our input. And this one is less likely to break as the HTML for the page changes. From here, we're gonna go ahead and grab the value property on the input exactly like we were doing before. Now, if we go ahead and refresh things inside of Google Chrome, we should see the exact same functionality. Right here, I could type a message in like test. I can send it off and it shows up for both. So now our application is working as expected. It's just a little more foolproof preventing changes to the HTML from breaking our JavaScript code. Now that we have this in place, we'll continue on in the next lesson. So stay tuned and I'll see you soon.